guest in this segment is the sheriff of Berkeley mm. County, Nate Harmon. Nate, good morning to you. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Any foreign language experience in your background? We it, didn't know I, about? I was, yeah, I was thinking about it. So, you know, taking Spanish one, two, and three in high school uh, was beneficial, but Thor the Explorer hands down was was best when when you have as yeah. many daughters as i do but, mud uh, river volcano yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. i know it i know it uh but that's as far as my foreign language goes it helps me out every once in a while but uh um that's about it hey a uh, lot of stuff to get to today so let's start first with uh, alley cat allies and mm-hmm. the ruling uh maria is not going to comment on this because her, her husband was involved in the ruling here but this had to do with foia and uh, compliance in submitting paperwork and information to Alley Cat Allies. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I understand that the the message being sent from the other side there is is uh, you know they got a touchdown, they won uh, their case, so to speak. This is a completely administrative judgment where uh, you know after receiving hundreds and hundreds of FOIAs with other issues and other requests, you know. Ultimately, there's if there's a mistake made within the FOIA um, process, uh, whoever made that mistake has the obligation to uh, answer for that mistake. And so there was a judgment because uh, we made such a mistake, and it wasn't an intentional uh, mistake at all in, in terms of, of the information that we provided. But uh, you know, when that happens, uh, judicially a judgment's made, and, and the judgment was made uh, in the terms of. Uh, not providing all the FOIA information, not any other judgment than that. I mean, it's... Did it, <laughs> did it include any reimbursement of attorney's fees? Yeah, and yeah that's what part? it is. That's exactly what it is. And that's the judgment that was was made. I believe it was uh, a little over uh, $50,000, but it, you pay for the other's attorney's fees. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, aside from that, there's no other judgment that was made. So if, if Alley Cat Allies is touting... Uh, that they've won something uh, in terms of the their allegations, uh, you know that's that's a bunch of BS and embellishment that that just goes along with their mantra from the beginning of all this. And this is no implication of guilt in the way you're handling animals. Absolutely not. This is simply strictly regarding how timely the turning over of information was. Yes, sir. All was right. it a timing issue or was some uh, misinformation provided? Well, as a, honestly, it was a misunderstanding or a miscommunication is the best way I could put it. Um, the officer providing the uh, – directed to provide the information uh, in regards to the FOIA and the county attorney's office, um, some of that paperwork wasn't provided and it wasn't revealed that it wasn't provided until the end. Um, so that's, that's pretty much all that occurred. And so, uh, honest mistake by our part, accidental completely, and uh, we'll abide by the judge's uh, judgment and ruling, and and we'll uh, take care of that. Does the fifty thousand in legal fees come out of your sheriff's department budget? Does it come from an insurance policy? It comes out of my budget. Yeah. Yeah. What about the substance of the, al- of the initial allegation? Has that been resolved? Well, to, to, as far as my office is concerned, 100% resolved. The allegations were, uh, at at best, uh, embellished uh, from previous uh, complaints. I mean, like, for example, the cat that they said had the, uh, the uh, pussy eye and everything, that is a technically a house cat there at Animal Control uh, that they tend to give medicine to uh, on a uh, weekly or monthly basis. That is their pet. And as that, and it's a chronic uh, issue with that specific cat. And when they take a picture like that of that cat at its worst, and you know, and throw it up on the, the, the social media, then you know, let it r- grow legs and snowball into something else. But that that's what they live on. That's what they thrived on, just to create their blueprint here. So, no, no allegations uh, as such were proven at all. Are they still trying to put roots down in Berkeley County? Yes, they are. Have they? What are they going to do in Berkeley County? I don't know. Um, I understand that they were buying property, and uh, I don't know where they are with that. I don't pay much attention to them uh, at all. Uh, I've got better things to do, but I, I'm sure that uh, they've got some other issues that I was made aware of with their leadership uh, changing hands um, unexpectedly. So uh, I'll let them deal with that, and um, I just I hope it doesn't 
uh, amount to where they do establish a foothold here because we don't need people like that here. Have you turned over the information as of this point? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that part of the issue is resolved. Yes, sir. Uh, let's move on, if we could, and that has to do with uh, one of the biggest complaints that I've ever heard since I've been hosting this program since 2010, which is the number of out-of-state vehicles that you can see every day when you go to school. They drop their kids off, and they've got tags from another state. Why doesn't somebody do something about that? It appears somebody's doing something about that now, though. Yeah, well, you know, we've obviously in my campaign and coming into office in 2021, that was uh, one of the things that I've promised the people that we would do and put more effort into we've had multiple meetings since then we've had efforts uh implemented such as the yellow cards that the sheriff's office uh had pre-existing before i got there that we issue we put more of an emphasis and effort on that specific assignments on that where a citizen might receive a yellow card with information on it hey give us a call here's the statu statutory um uh, code that references out-of-state uh, tags and what information you need to know. Give us a call. We'll work it out. And uh, then we had um, uh, meetings with the assessor's office and the county attorney and prosecuting attorney's office on a better way to work with the assessor's office in um, doing um, better advertisement and for the folks that buy uh, property here, uh, what information is being uh, handed over to the new resident, so to speak, mm -hmm. that's buying property. So uh, the assessor's office is doing that. We are advocating to HOAs that uh, HOAs uh, reach out to their residents. We give them and provide them literature to hand out to the new resident during their new resident packet and welcoming. And uh, we speak at H HOAs. We, we uh, take a 15, 20-minute uh, presentation to the members, some of these HOAs they only do it once a year. Some of them do it once, uh, you know, twice a year, and or once a month. So we take advantage as, of that as much as possible. Uh, I know Steve Catlett, Commissioner Catlett, doesn't want credit for anything uh, of this, but I will give him credit for being the the spark that was needed uh, to add to this effort in terms of. Uh, and there's going to be a, a, a larger, more official announcement of this whole campaign, but uh, he was the spark that was needed and emphasized uh, folks that uh, can actually focus on this specific topic, meaning I have out-of-state tag enforcement officers now, too, that are contracted that we send out that actually uh, goes off of a uh, IT program that – uh, with these yellow cards and assessor's notes that we put this information into a computer system, red flags that after 30 days, my OST officers will meet with the resident and subsequently give them an additional 10 days after the warning if they are found not to be exempt at all. And, uh, you know, the goal is obviously the, the tax revenue, 75% of which goes towards the schools, which Mr. Stevens uh, and, and you all had spoke about a little bit on school safety and SROs. And, you know, I can't think of a better um, um, example of what that could potentially pay for when I'm screaming that we need more SROs and floating SROs in the county. Well, there you go. We're, you know, you're low end $2 million, high end $4 million, somewhere around there, ballpark, in terms of missed revenue when we're talking about this stuff. You know, and um, it, we understand that it's an inconvenience to have to pick up the phone and call the sheriff's office, but there's an extension on the top uh, of the page there. We want you to speak to Miss Larson. We want you to speak to Mrs. Brock. And, and call them at our office, uh, not 911. Don't bombard 911 Center with these calls, but call Miss Larson, call Miss Brock, and, and that's extension 7206. 7206. And, and, and they would be more than happy to answer your questions. But this is a really, really good effort. Uh, Commissioner Catlick helped us with, and I, I'm very pleased to be a part of it. Sh Sheriff, what's the penalty? Uh, in effect, if you do not register your automobile, you're falsifying your personal property form that you fill out for the assessors. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a penalty besides just saying you should not? Have, you should have been more astute in filling out your form. Mm. Well, yeah, there's a, up to a $500 fine for first offense, and it, it could move into a jailable offense on second offense and thereafter. Um, I, I got to say, in my travels and going with our not only our OST officers, but before their hiring and that implementation, when I went out and did this for myself, um, I, I was finding people. There was people seven years, 
uh, that lived in this county that didn't register their vehicle. And as long as you're doing your homework before you knock on that door, you know this, and and there's really just you know the jaw dropping um facial expression that you get like look we need to do this we need to we're not out there wanting to write tickets we want to give people the opportunity but come on we all need to do our part so yeah there is a fine and it could be jailable on second or third offenses besides um the the parents dropping their mm. their children off at school what's the other way do people call and say hey my neighbors had this for you know x number of years how do you know besides the school drop-off where this is an issue? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Maria. It was, you know, when a parent is dropping a kid off at school, that is the last place I want to intervene sure. in regarding some other topic. So I always thought it to be an ethical issue that I had a problem with. I don't want to post my officers up there and when I got to drop my kid off to school and now I got to go to work. You know, you're white-collar, hard-working people. I get it. And and I had an issue with that. And I think what we're going to do and what I will start with by saying now is if you think of like a DUI checkpoint or, or other checkpoints like that, we are going to work with the school system. And I will have our OST officers as well as our SROs doing these checkpoints at the schools at uh, various times, but that will be organized through the schools. I believe the school is a good resource to uh, get ahead of this. Uh, if you do have kids enrolled in our school system, aside from the McKinney-Vento Act and other uh, uh, federal-funded uh, issues for kids or homeless kids, um, then then let's let's at least give you an opportunity to fix the issue. And, and we'll revisit it if we continue to see the, the, the same name, the same address, the same tag, same vehicle, stuff like that. So. Nate, uh, Judy Boykin made a suggestion on uh, our comment uh, page there that maybe each realtor should give the form out at settlement. Rental agents, too. Oh, uh, You know what? Good. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Judy Boykin. Judy, good point. Um, I will implement that as well. We've been going to uh, places like Priority Place. Uh, and other rental uh, properties and they have been very welcoming to accept our literature as we're asking them to pass this stuff out mm -hmm. you know if, if, if there, there's a lot of things that can constitute you as a resident here and we want people to know that and I've always been saying that you know a lot of I think what our issues are is a lack of communication and or miscommunication so if we can educate the public on what the needs are and let them know that your first time registering your vehicle, you're you're exempt from the six percent sales tax on that title. So, um, you know, if they're, you're avoiding that part, uh, don't worry about it. It, it. It's not it's an exempt. So the QR code on our literature takes you right to that uh, website for all that information. So, but we are visiting the rental properties. A lot of folks respond to uh, uh, the threats, if you will, and Delegate Horace made a uh, made a comment. Insurance fraud. Is insurance fraud affected here? Someone does not admit, someone claims they're, uh, uh, they're not claiming they're in West Virginia. Would that influence their, uh, their insurance? Oh, if we, I tell you, if we, if we come upon uh, an insurance fraud uh, case, then I know that our deputies will do the right thing and investigate that uh, appropriately. We have not seen a, a huge uh, issue with that. Uh, insurances are very much very easily validated and we have not run into a major issue with insurance yeah I did not state my question very well the fact they do not register their automobile mm -hmm. in West Virginia could that be interpreted as insurance fraud well you got to look at it it could it depends on um, it, it depends on how long they've been um, registering their vehicle outside of this state. I mean, I always believe in a grace period if uh, their insurance policy and stuff is checked on and there's uh, ways that we can immediately check to see if it's valid or not on scene of an accident. So, uh, and, and that's the goal, to make sure that the other, the at-fault party has the appropriate insurance. So um, w we haven't experienced a large issue in that, but can the deputy go ahead and associate um, uh, insurance fraud with the insurance company that is worked out through our agency and that particular uh, insurance company in terms of how hard they want to push that button uh, because technically they're the victim sure
So the rationale behind people not making the change um, used to be that tax that mm -hmm. you had to pay on the vehicle. And if that's, you know, temporarily suspended or, or permanently suspended, then what's the, what's the rationale for people not wanting to do this thing? Uh, well, some of it's uh, just uh, human nature. They they don't want to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Procrastination. Too busy of a life. Um, I've heard it all. Um, <laughs> so um, it's 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 just a matter of them wanting to exclude themselves from that six percent tax was what the main initiate sure. was. Sure. Um, but I also think on the latter end is that it, that's a one time exemption. So you get assessed for that property thereafter. At some point, yeah. at some point. And I've told this story before. When I came to Martinsburg in 1981, and I was a journal reporter making police calls, and I went to the state police barracks in Jefferson County, and I'll never forget this. After, you know, a couple so trips, the corporal in charge said to me, Maria? you have Pennsylvania tags on your car. <laughs> and I said, yes, Corporal, I do. He said, you know, you need to get that. Mm -hmm. You need to get that registered in West Virginia. And I was like, well, he's like, are you living here? And I said, well, yeah, I'm living here. <laughs> and he said, well, you need to get that channel. I'm like, I will get that. You know, and the next time I was like, okay, I got to do this. So, yeah. Is, yeah. It, isn't it true that your first excuse was, well, I stole that car. So yeah. it's <laughs> not even my car. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, Nate, before we run out of time, I want to touch on school safety. And I'd like to bring you back and do an entire segment on school safety with you as we begin a new school year have there been enough improvements in the process to make you happy as the sheriff yeah i gotta say that um since 2021 the relationship between uh, our office and the school administration and the schools in general has uh, done a complete turnaround we are very much actively involved with each other we're talking we created a school safety subcommittee where there's stakeholders from the school admin that attend that we're at the table, we are discussing innovative ways to, uh, for the future in terms of uh, safety upgrades and technologies that could be implemented. The, the, the fact of the matter is I am very pleased on the, the school executive staff and the school board for uh, both being interested and in allowing us to, to have that trifecta opinion on how we should do this together, and especially since uh, between 2022 and 2023, we had 54 uh, school threats. That's quite a bit. Uh, and uh, we don't, I don't ever want to guess what would have happened if, if something different was done or not done. You can't measure deterrence, but that statistic in and by itself is enough to say there's always uh, something we can do better or more of and I'm glad that we are all at that point and uh, I'm very comfortable going into the school year that we are on the same page and we are looking at the same sheet of music when it comes to our kids safety that's quite a change of tone from when you kicked the hornet's nest uh, last year. <laughs> it is it is you know and it, you know and I, I i i said it once before and i'll say it again you know um it has to stay front and center stage it has to we can't uh, let it uh, grow stale and if it takes that from time to time um I, obviously i didn't intend that to um you know but you asked the question i gave an answer and i, I will never be afraid to give an answer for what i'm asked uh, and and uh, i hope just people are ready for the answer because i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna sugarcoat anything i'll, I'll say exactly how it is and but i will say that uh, you know i'm glad i did it and i'm glad where we're at now very good sheriff nate Harmon. thanks so much for coming in we always appreciate it Hope Thank to have you. you back soon uh, before you head out today. Maybe we can talk about a couple of dates. Sure.